You, you, you hear me? When the pain and suffering comes, it doesn't come with an explanation. Just like babies are born, and they don't come, mamas, with an instruction manual. No, nope, they just pop out. You're like, ah, how can something with, cause me so much pain be so joyful? Then you get to a teenager, and you say, they're not joyful. No, I'm playing. <laughs> can I take them back? Right? Now watch. It's, it's so huge. When we think, when we think God is, is hiding it because we don't understand it and we know in part, he's been trying to show us sometimes what it is and we've ignored it. Now please... When you and I, and this is only one reason, this ain't all the reasons for pain and suffering. When you and I ignore the warning signs, ready, Teresa? When we ignore what God is trying to tell us, he has to yell louder. You got to write this down because this ain't on your notes. God yelling louder is called suffering. Oh. What did you say? God yelling loudly can be labeled as suffering. Because when he spoke in the still small voice, the Bible says we didn't hear him. I don't understand, Pastor Mark. Yes, you do. You are either a parent or you've had one. And what do parents do when they talk nicely to their kids for the 89th millionth billionth to the X exponential power? to clean their room. Now, I know what black parents do. Let's talk to some non-black people. What, what do non-black people do? Because I don't know. I got a black mama. That's a whole nother category. Right? What? Say it again. Okay, that's, that's Hispanic. So, I'm from Indiana. I, I can't say that. Chancla? The sandal. Oh, like Samoans, like Hobbs and Shaw. Okay, okay. I don't know, like, like his belly, but I know like, movies, right? Hobbs and Shaw, she's like, I'm going to take out my saddle and beat you. Right? And all these big dudes are like, please. Okay, so his Hispanics get hit with a sandal. Chocolate. Okay, that's an upgrade from, like, trees and branches. Do y'all know, uh, this is an ethnic, do y'all know black people just pick up everything? Huh? I, I'm going to say this, and somebody's going to quote me and send me an email about Facebook. But, but I believe CPS was created because of black mamas. <laughs> no plan. When we ignore stuff, God has to get our attention. That's what I'm saying right here. That was joking, funny, but it's the truth, right? You say, clean up your room. No, clean up your room. Okay, clean up your room. <laughs> what did I say? <laughs> then they go, you don't have to yell. <laughs> yes, I do. So, so when God is going deep, and I'm going to show you some stuff today, fam. When God's going deep, he got to yell. If you won't hear his words, then you have to experience his permission. Ooh, fire. When you won't hear his word, you have to experience his permission. And then he's going to give permission for this thing called S, suffering. But it's all for a good reason. Now, today I'm going to bring this back around. It's so powerful. How many of y'all knew, because I did not know, how many of you knew Job's name means where is the father? I did not know that. And all these years, Miss Sylvia, all these years, Miss Antoinette, I've been reading Job, and I've only heard the preacher talk about the suffering and then double for his trouble. And then, and, then, and then you hear an echo after somebody make a good sermon, everybody echoes it. So I've heard double for his trouble forever. Am I the only person? Right, right. But then you miss the other deeper parts, Kelly, of the book, right? You miss the deeper parts. And so this book, is trying to answer, are you ready? The question, Nate, 
Where is the father? And wait till you see how it comes back around. So you got to understand, back in Bible times, Edward, whenever somebody said your name, everyone knew what your name meant. In America, we don't know what people's name means. We say Randy. What does that mean? Sylvester Stallone. No. What does Randy mean? <laughs> we don't know. What does Wilda mean? Do you know what your name means, Mom? No. Peggy, do you know what your name means? No. It, does anybody know what their name means? Laura, what's your name? What's your name mean? Crown of laurels. That's white. What is a laurel? Like a wreath or something like in the Olympics? No, I know what it means. See how black I know? Come on. What's your name mean, babe? Forever ruler? Oh, snaps. That's as bad as all-knowing. Kendra name means all-knowing. Man, that's tough. Let me see. I can't see y'all, so just tell me. Yeah, baby, what's your name? Corey? Is your name Corey? I can't see you. I'm sorry. And what does it mean? God's peace. What is it, Austin? God's peace and what? Maiden. That's so tight. What's your sister's name? Tell me. What is it? Rising. Will the parents help out with the children? Austin, Kiana, will you help out? I'm, I'm 54. I can't hear stuff. Rising. So when we say people's names, Dana, we don't know what it means, and the person we're talking to doesn't know what it means. This is important to this book. I'm going to open up this book. Job means, watch, Brooke, it means where is the father? So watch this. Job is rich. You ready, right? Job is rich. Job is blessed. Miss Reese, he's so blessed, God offers him up to the devil. Brings him up. But while he walks around, every time people come up to him, ready, Miss Rosemary? Here's what it sounds like. Where's the father? Where's the father? Excuse me, where is the father? I see you got all these cars. Where's the father? I see you got 10 kids, Matt. Where's the father? Are y'all listening? Every time, every time people walk up to him, Tony, they are not saying Job, Keith. They're saying, where is the father? Now, this is going to get deep. You ready? So no matter what you acquire, it doesn't matter if you don't know where the father is. Let me see, like five head claps a couple of snaps and a snort. Was that you, Fernando? Did you snort on me? I'm playing. Do you understand? So watch. God is in heaven. Here's what he hears. Everybody asking, where is the father? Where is the father? Where is the father? Where is the father? So watch. I'm going to change the whole conversation. You ready? This is heavy. When Lucifer gets in line, and stands in front with all the angels, God, are you ready, Frank? God looks at Lucifer, who's now the dragon and the devil, and says, have you considered where the father is? Oh, uh, come on. Oh, uh, this changed everything. Kelly. The devil stands, pops out, and God says, hey, have you considered where the father is? Because he said, have you considered my servant Job? He's righteous and faithful. Come on. But here's what he said. This is good. Right, right, right. God comes up, and the devil pops out, and God says, hey, what's up? And then he says, have you, do you know where the father is? And the father's sitting right in front of him. And the devil ignores his question and says, yeah, 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 yeah. I'm not worried about the father. I'm worried about his stuff. Because the only reason he blesses you is because he's got stuff. So God puts a challenge out that we've not seen and thought about. 
He said, the rest of this book, 42 chapters, I'm getting ready to show all of you where I am. Thank you. Ain't that heavy? And now everything's going to be put in perspective. Now, let me speed it up. Job chapter 38, 33 rather, 8 through 10. Watch this. Surely you have spoken in my hearing. This is Elihu. Now, remember that Job has four friends. Three of them came. He looked so bad, Randy. He had, looked like he had leprosy, HIV. He had all kinds of stuff. <coughs> Excuse me. So they come. He looked so bad that they sit there for seven days, and they don't even talk to him because he looked so bad. Then a fourth friend comes. His name is Elihu. He's the youngest one, and this is why, young people, you need to be encouraged because God will use you at your age to speak to older people who are not listening. Now, okay, hold on, hold on, hold on. I, I just heard myself say that. And if I had kids at home, I would not have said that. <laughs> so that doesn't mean not obeying your parents, young people, because they're going to go home. I am young. I am Elahu. You must bow down. Wreath of laurels or laurels of wreath. I don't know what she said. Laurels. So watch. Elihu's the youngest, Mike, and he says, I've been sitting here through all these chapters, and I heard you, Frank. I heard all three of you give Job advice. But I've also heard you, Job, give and talk back to your three friends. Now, I've let all y'all talk. That's called deference. Now, and it's called respect. Now, I'm going to speak. Watch what he says, Mom, and it starts to unwind the whole book. Surely you have spoken in my hearing, Elihu said that, and I have heard the sound of your words, Job. Here's what you said. Here it is, Pam. You ready? We always wonder what happened. Why? Here's the reason for Job's suffering. Here it is. Watch. I am pure, Job said, without transgression. Young people, trans patent transgression means break the law. I am pure, and I don't break the law. Natural or spiritual. I am innocent. And there's no iniquity in me. There's no wickedness in me. But it took the young, young person to come back to Job and say, Job, this is how you're talking. Watch. Yet he, God, yet he, who is God, Job said, finds occasions against me he counts me as his enemy. Job, and I would too. I would have been cussing. I'm sorry. Young people don't cuss. It's not right. But <laughs> I don't blame Job, but that's not the point. Are you ready? Job said, I'm innocent, and I don't know why I'm going through this. And then he comes back and says, I don't break the law. I don't mess up. And God, here's where he messed up. Ready, Randy? And God, watch this, is attacking me. For, he said, God's attacking me, and God is treating me like an enemy, and look how perfect I am. Can I tell you something? Just knowing that, do you have a little bit different perspective of why God had to yell and give divine permission, even if you don't agree with the suffering? Can you understand now why God would allow it? Is this all right? Are you all right? Because you look sleepy. I'm glad I can't see you because of the light. The young person said, you act like your stuff don't stink. See how I said stuff? Here it is. I cannot emphasize this enough. I need to do a whole series on this because we don't get this. And when you don't get this, Miss Tanya, we won't get anything else. And you won't understand and be able to put in context why you have problems. Are you ready? This is heavy. I cannot emphasize enough. God is more interested in who we are than he is what we have accomplished, what we have acquired, and what we are doing. Here it is, Mike. Job's issues were private. They were not public. Yeah. 
Y'all doing a little better. Listen, the world, here's where, you ready? The world system is ran by who? Who? Satan. So if you ran a system, wouldn't you set up the reward and punishment? Don't you run the system in your house, parents? Not really, but you think you do. Don't you run the system in your house? Right? And you have a system of rewards and punishment. So the devil took the world system from Adam, ready, Austin? And he set up a system of rewards and punishment. Now, you follow me? So what does the devil reward? You ready, Pam? What does he reward? No, no, no. What does he reward? Come on, go deeper. It's right in front of you on the thing. Stuff, okay? He rewards what you accomplish. That's why all the stars have their own award shows. Have you noticed that the regular people that listen to their music don't have an award show? Yeah, come on, come on. They have their own award show, man. They, they honor each other, and they get up there, and they lie. I'd like to thank God for all my raunchy lyrics. I'd like to thank God for calling women out of their name. I'd like to thank God because I'm a pimp. No, look, that's not God. That's the other one. That's the God of this world. That's the God of this system. And what we don't understand is we've all grown up in a system that has the wrong reward. It will, oh, come on, somebody. I'm trying to teach something. It, it rewards, it rewards what you accomplish, what you've acquired, and what you're doing. It makes a big issue out of what you're doing, which is why Christianity has toppled down. Andrew needs to come back up. And Christianity became behavior modification because Christianity started trying to get along with something it was supposed to battle. We're not supposed to battle people. We started battling people. We're supposed to battle ideas, pulling down strongholds. But we've come out of the theater, the public theater, and now we don't have apologetics, Mr. Mike, so we don't know why we believe what we believe. So an atheist comes, knows why they believe what they believe, and when we get in a conversation, they convince us instead of us convincing them because Christianity was never supposed to be a speech. We were supposed to have some power behind it. We were supposed to lay hands on sick people. They were supposed to recover. We were supposed to do the work of Jesus. Instead, we became philosophers of religion and it don't work because the church rewards what the world rewards and this whole book is about where is the father this whole book is about you don't know me this whole book Vic is about I don't care what you've acquired because I'm the one that gave it to you how can I be impressed by something I gave you how many of you on Christmas would love to get presents back, Manny? You would love to get presents back that you gave yourself. How many of you all would love to open up 10 boxes and you bought everything in the box and you wrapped everything in the box and then, and then when your kids walked up and gave you the box, you're like, ooh, come on, somebody talk. I'm teaching a little bit today. God, God has given us everything that we have. How can he be impressed by what we have? But the devil tells us to chase it. So Job says, I'm innocent. Listen to these words, Miss Barbara. I don't break the law. Job, you don't break no law? So you don't break no law. Job's like, according to speech, no. Nope. Are y'all hearing me? I don't break no law. I don't do nothing bad. And then he accused God. So, watch, Ronald, because I'm going through this, it's your fault, God. Now, you ready? You're not trying to bring something out of me that will hurt me later. You're trying to fight me for no reason. I'm going to tell you, I'm going to give you some stuff today. So, Job called God a bully. And God said, what? So now come to school, boy. And he said, sit down and answer me while I ask you some questions. You want this one question? Y'all want this question? This is so heavy. Well, you, want, you, want, you ready? And there's like a thousand questions. You ready? Ready? How come in the world some places are light and some places are dark at the same time? 
Just think about the concept. So even in your suffering, it might be dark, but it's light somewhere else. And if you just keep rotating, you'll get it. <laughs> God starts laying out stuff. He starts laying out stuff. Boy, you come talk to me. Don't talk to me unless you have knowledge. So you think I'm the source of your suffering because the fire came from heaven and the wind came. You think I'm the source. But if you knew me, where is the father? If you knew me, where is the father? You wouldn't blame me and you wouldn't say that I am attacking you. Where is the father? He's trying to tell him the whole point of this is you've been blessed with stuff, but you still don't know me. Oh, y'all, can you apply this to you and me? This is just heavy. And can I tell you who's going to suffer with this the most? Who's going to struggle with this the most? Those of you that are successful. Those of you that have nice house, nice car, those of you that have put your hands to the plow and you've been blessed, you have to be the most careful because you will be the one that misunderstands suffering the most. Oh, the people here that have been through some stuff have a deeper faith normally than in God. That's why the Bible says it's hard for a rich man to go to heaven. It's easier for a camel to go through the eye of the needle than for a rich man to go to heaven because the rich man is operating most of the time underneath the world system, and he thinks, and this is how they used to think in the Jewish times, the more you had represented the more God blessed you. And God is like, I'm not interested in what you have. I'm interested in the toy and who you are. Oh, y'all, are y'all getting anything? Now let me pick it up. So Job has lost almost everything, right? Almost all his possessions. He's lost 10 children. How many of y'all know that's terrible? Man, God, you got to holler that loud? See? He's lost his health and his health has been attacked. Now are you ready? Come back. Where, say, where is the father? Say it again. Now, Mom, I'm going to show you the whole purpose of the book. And you can't tell the purpose of the book unless you know what Job's name means. Y'all ready? Some of y'all been in church 20 years. Now you're ready to learn something, just like I did. Job 42, this is the end of the book, Rita. Both verses 2, 3, and 5. I know Job said, okay, 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 okay. God had asked him a thousand questions, like, how come it's light and dark at the same time? And he couldn't understand it. Watch Twyla. And then God says, Job says, okay, okay, okay. I can't take it anymore. It's too many hard questions. He says, I know that you can do everything, but you just said he was attacking you. And you felt innocent because you got attacked. Now he believes something different. Can we be honest? How come he believes something different? Because of the divine permission. We're about to hear a different person. And this is what all of us are missing. We want to complain about the suffering because we can't see we're going to be a different person. And then we can be honest about why there was permission given in the first place because we're innocent. We don't transgress. Look at me. I'm a this. I'm a that. I have this. I have that. Look at what I've accomplished. God said, yes, and look who you are. Is somebody going to talk to me today? Look who you are. What, what, what that you've acquired can you take after your last breath? God said, talk to me. So I'm going to say it again, Rita. God says, what? tell me what you're going to put in your U-Haul to heaven. Tell me, what is it? What, what is it? What is, what is it? What items are you going to put in your U-Haul when you come to heaven? Tell me. Show, show me. Show me. And then whatever you put in the U-Haul on your way to heaven, that's what I'm proud of. Are y'all going to talk to me or no? I know that you can do everything. Now, here it is. And that no purpose of yours can be withheld from you. Can I tell you something? It's not about your pain. It's about the purpose for it. Oh, you should write that down. It's not about your pain. It's about the purpose for it. 
I know it's painful. I know losing 10 kids is painful. I know being sick is painful. I know not getting to the college you want is painful. I know not getting the scholarship you want is painful, young people. I know not getting the grade on the test that you study for is painful. I, I know it's painful. But there's a purpose behind you not getting into that college because if you would have went to that college, you would have lost your salvation. So I sent you to this college. It's not as attractive, don't have the best programs, but this college, you're going to be a light. In this college, you're going to be a darkness purveyor, a purveyor of darkness. That means you're going to give darkness away. No purpose can be withheld from you. You ask, who is this who hides counsel without knowledge? Basically, you come and say you're innocent. You say I attacked you, Miss Barbara, but you have no knowledge because you don't understand I'm working the good out of you. Therefore, I have not uttered what I did not understand. I have uttered what I, uh, I have uttered what I did not understand. I've said some stuff, Mike, I didn't understand, Job said. Things too wonderful for me. See, they're beyond me. And I was commenting when I should have just been praying and shut my mouth, which I did not know. Can I tell y'all something? When it comes to suffering and pain and evil, there's some things we don't know. And we can't comment about God when we don't know. We need to pray for understanding and wisdom like the book of James says. But if you and I don't have all the answers, which we will never have all the answers, we need to be quiet. Job was commenting on something he don't know. But I want you to know this is Job talking, Tony, and something has changed in Job. And can I tell you, divine permission changes you. Things too wonderful for me, watch Kelly, which I did not know. I have heard of you, here it is, by the hearing of the ear, but now my eyes see you. Hold on. I have said this a thousand times. Now I'm going to explain it. Oh, there you are. Okay, we're not going to see nobody. You ready? Listen, listen, listen. Rich, bless kids, bless person so much so that God offers him up in a discussion. You ready? Watch Sage. Watch, watch. Here's the thing. You ready? Now watch. He acquired everything that everybody would call him blessed about. And he did all of that, watch Beth, by hearing about God. He accomplished all of it by hearing about God. Do you guys remember hide and seek? The new kids, young people don't. Unless it's a video game. Hide and seek 2K. (laughs) Oh, gosh. Hide and seek. You would hear people, fam, and you would say, is that fam over there? So you knew you could hear because you knew who you were playing with. Y'all, got, y'all have to get this. You knew who was in the game. You knew who started the game. Watch that. You knew who was playing, and you could hear them. You, some people would move. They would run, and you would see them, right? They, you, you would hear them, and you'd say, I hear you, but you don't know where they're at until you see them, that's why it's called hide and seek. Most believers don't understand that we have been so much hearing God on Sunday that we have not seen him. So the suffering comes, Marty, so we can actually see him. When you see him, Miss Judy, you know what his position is. When you know what his position is, Mike, you can have a relationship with him. You can't have a relationship with people that you hear but can't see. What is the name of the book, Sonia? Where? God got tired of people rewarding the wrong things in Job's life. So he had to take the things in Job's life and improve Job. So now when people say, where is the father? Oh, he's the one that went through this, 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 and got double for his trouble. 
We know that God is a restorer. We don't have to ask where God is anymore. God is a restorer. But before we were asking, where is the Father while we watched all the stuff? Are y'all getting this? God is more concerned about who we are, so he will give divine permission for you to lose what you have. Oh, my gosh. Are you? He's more concerned about, that's why some of you have went through some of the things that you're going through. That's why some of you are going through some things now. It's not the only reason. This is not the only reason for suffering. But the answer to the book is I've heard you by the hearing of the ear, but now I see you and I wouldn't have seen you if you wouldn't have talked to the devil. I would I wouldn't have seen you if you wouldn't allow this suffering. I wouldn't have seen you if you allowed this pain. Now, can I give you a drop? Can I drop something on you? I think he got double for his trouble, Pam, because he was a different person, and now he could handle twice as much. So be encouraged right now. You can get twice as much. Be encouraged. If you and I respond to the pain correctly and don't talk about God in a way we shouldn't talk about God, we are better people. We become people in Christ, not people just listening to Christ. God can use us. And then when we come through the pain, when we come through the suffering, nobody will have to ask. Where is the Father? They will look at you and see. Come on, give Jesus a shout. Come on, lift your voice. Come on, 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 come on. So I gave you the outline. I told myself I'm going to stay on time. I'm going to stay on time. Brooke is blinking at me. It is six minutes and 59 seconds over. Thank you. Read your outline. Read the rest of it. This was so rich. So repeat after me. Satan, Satan. is trying to destroy me. God is trying to develop me. Come on, lift your hand. Oh, man. That was probably two lessons. Did you get it? So repeat after me, God, I will stop being mad because I approach you without knowledge. I don't know the purpose for this pain you have allowed. Maybe you are bringing me closer to you so I get beyond hearing and get to seeing. You're going to be all right. You're going to be all right. Turn it up for me. Great. That's great, Brooke. Turn it up, Josh. That's good. You guys are so on in the spirit. It is well. It is well. Ah. Uh, Without this situation, you wouldn't know him like you're getting ready to know him. Without this situation, your faith wouldn't be deeper, and that's the point. You can always get stuff, but stuff can always be taken. It's not about your ability to require, acquire. It's about your ability to respond. God never tempts. He only tests. It's one thing to say, you know the material. It's another thing to write it down on a piece of paper. God allows trials to refine us and take what is private, Miss Reese, and make it public for a season, hoping that we will trust in him with all of our heart, lean not to our own understanding, in all of our ways acknowledge the creator, because I'm just a creation, and trust that he will direct my path. Come on, baby. It's all right. And he will direct my path. Father, we love you today. Lift your hands. And we honor you and we thank you for hope. Hope is alive today. Hope is alive. We thank you, God. We have read this book forever, some of us, and not seen some of these truths you've revealed to us today. Father, there's a limit and there's a reason. And, and to be honest, Daddy, the reason is more important than the limit because the limit comes out of your character. 
It's the reason. So I don't have to go through stuff repeatedly. At least the same thing. God, help our church to be better in Christ. Help us to be better. Help us to see what you see in us. And stop ignoring what you know to be true. And God, even our natural successes don't mean we see. It is well. It is well. It is well. It is well with COVID. It is well. Y'all, you know, COVID has exposed the whole health care system. COVID has exposed leaders around the world. COVID has exposed nations. Maybe that's why it was allowed. If you're here today, I want you to know that God loves you and God does not always, punishment and suffering and hard times is not always because you're a sinner. Ask Jesus. He went through a cross and never sinned. Some of you are just being refined for a future purpose, and that's because of Jesus going through his suffering and not complaining. He said, not my will, Dad, but yours. I get it. I just had to ask, can you remove this cup? But I get it. And I know that many people will come behind me, and they'll have an opportunity because I suffered, and I actually was innocent. See, Jesus was the opposite of Job. If you're here today and you've been misunderstanding your suffering and your problems, this should be a bunch of people, you stand to your feet. If you've been misunderstanding your life, some of you misunderstood the beginning of your life. Come on. God will heal you today if you will be open and honest. Some of you have wondered, how did I start off like this? How did my mom and dad, what was going on? Why me? And you've misunderstood that. Stand to your feet. God's going to touch your heart today. I can't touch your heart with a message, but the Lord can touch your heart if we invite him. Some of you have, have been through mistakes and had nothing that you did not initiate, and you have been kind of angry at God and pushed back a little bit and, let, and, let, and put God in certain areas because of your beginning. And God says, it's not about your beginning, it's about your end. And the Bible said Job lived 140 years and saw four generations. So not only did he get restored from his 10 kids, he got three more generations of children. And guess what, guess what, Paul, Paul, they got? One that wasn't concerned about what he had. One that was concerned about who he was. And he was able to put in four generations, lose something he couldn't put in the first one. Because the first one, he had to pray after they partied. Where'd they learn that? If you're here today and you do not know the Lord Jesus Christ, what does that mean? See, all of you have heard of Jesus. Noel, Noel. You sing about him. Movie stars, singers, rappers sing about him every Christmas. And that's an example that I hear him, but they don't see him. They don't see him the other 364 days of the year. They don't see him. Some of you are sitting here today, and you've heard about God. You've been raised in church. Some of you kids have been in church all your life because your parents made you. And today, just a little glimpse, today you see some of the purpose for your problems and suffering. I need you to stand today. You've heard about him, but now you see him, and you're going to be able to take what you see and put it into your life. You can't come to church and hear but not live Monday through Saturday. And some of you that are sitting down, you know there's evil around you. You know you're allowing evil around you. You're not standing for principle. You're not standing for Jesus Christ. And then you come here and want me to make you feel better. I pray you stay guilty. Because me and you are not innocent. And if we can't stand up in moments like this, we can't be refined for the future. So I'm going to give you one more option. If you're here today and you need to do better in this area about being a messenger and representative for Jesus and stop whining and complaining every time something happens and you need to accept Jesus in your heart and live out that acceptance, stand to your feet. And we're going to pray. We got to do better. All of us got to do better. And instead of whining, 
We need to be representatives. We got to do better. We're not innocent. We've broken all kind of laws. And whatever the creator decides, we have to trust in that because he can't do anything wrong. Every good and perfect gift comes from God, the Father of lights, and whom there's no variance or shadow of turning. Some of you have acquired so many things in your natural life, and now God is getting your attention, and you're in shock because you thought that was a sign of his approval. And you're not bad because God said he's a blameless man. But God said, I want to do more with him, so I have to purge him and refine him. Lift your hands. Dear Jesus, today I understand and I see where I was only hearing. Today I understand there are reasons for your divine permission. Lord Jesus, let me be more like you and respond to pain like you did. I need you, your forgiveness, and your strength. Lord Jesus, forgive me for all my sins. I believe you came in the flesh and died for me. And you rose from the dead three days later because you were innocent and they had no right to kill you. So today, I understand you were my substitute, and I receive it in my heart. I love you, and I know you love me. Amen. Come on up, babe. Come on, you can do better than that. Come on. Come on, your mind is clear today. Your mind is clear today. There are reasons for divine permission. Y'all right? Repeat after me. It is well. Now come on, give him a shout. Amen, amen, amen. Satan wants to destroy you. God wants to develop you. Remember that. Listen, we appreciate you being with us today. We love Facebook. We appreciate you. If you stood up today and you need to be strengthened in your journey, a lot of people stand up but don't have the discipline and know what to do every day. And then they say, well, I don't have a Bible or I don't know how to pray. We've taken care of that. Pastor Lou found this program, and I'm so thankful. I want you to text JOURNEY to 760-706-7562. My hope and prayer is that everybody in this church at some point will have this number and have this system. It's 21 weeks of discipleship. It's a push system, meaning they'll push scriptures to you. They'll push encouragement to you, and that'll build your habit so you can do it on your own. Does that make sense? But if you have struggled with that, you have to text JOURNEY to this number, and it'll help you be equipped to do all the things God has for you to do. Do you feel some hope today? I hope so. I hope you're encouraged today. I hope you're encouraged by two of you. All right. Come on, let's give him a shout. Facebook. Come on, let's come on, come on, come on. Facebook, we love you and we appreciate you. So on the count of three, I want all of us to say this together as we dismiss Facebook. We, have, we want to put our core value in you from our church. We just did a leadership retreat, and Pastor Kendra and I struggled for three days. Who are we? What is our core value? And this is what it is. On the count of three, one, two, three. We will live and work by this conviction, we will not stop or quit until we are directed by God. Come on, give Jesus a shout. All right. On the count of three, one, two, three. We are Abundant Nation. God bless you, Facebook. We'll see you later. Come on, give Jesus a shout. Don't stop. Don't stop. Hello. We want to thank you for being a part of our service today here at Abundant Living Family Church, High Desert. Now is the time where you get to partake in this service through your giving and through your generosity. You know, the Bible says in the book of Acts that they had all things in common. And that is really true when it comes to our giving. When we give to the kingdom of God, we know that people around the world and in our local community are going to be blessed by your generosity. We have ministries in Uganda that are feeding the poor. We have ministries 
in India that provide water for people that don't have the water on a regular basis. And then here in our very own high desert community, we have people that are homeless, that just have different struggles. And our church is able to reach out to them and be able to take care of them and help them when they have trouble and are having struggles in their life. All of that happens because of you and because of your generosity. So we so appreciate today you being allowed at this time to give into the kingdom of God and be a blessing to those that might not have it. So we thank you so much and God bless you.